All right, so today I'm gonna be talking about just the gist of taking care of a bubble tip anemone. So I'm gonna pretty much cover the ideal basics and then stuff that a lot of videos I see on YouTube don't cover. So first thing I wanna start off with is pretty important, the lighting. So they're not that demanding in lighting, whereas they just need simple LEDs that pretty much point directly toward them or at least in the genre area. So I've had this guy for about, I see maybe two months now for in a like a four month to three month old reef tank so all those rumors that they say oh keep them in a well, more than a six month established tank that's all bs like ignore that as long as you're stable with your parameters and you know what you're doing and you do your research so this guy he's probably grown about i don't know he's he was probably the size of the <laughs> a reef right like right here like that size his just with the tentacles now this dude's probably a good like six inches in diameter so definitely grown and the key thing i'd say is lighting led i use something that a lot of enemies like it's white lighting so right here i have oh we hard to tell but it's like white leds mixed with a little bit of blue and it's not it's not expensive at all it's like 30 bucks for this whole light and I also have this other hang on light, but that's not even pointing toward it. It's more just the white light that makes this enemy happy. And so that's lighting. It's not that demanding. Next, I wanna talk about feeding. So feeding, all right, so here, I obviously, like most people, got the enemy for my clownfish. Unfortunately, they haven't decided to host yet, which I mean is cool because, I mean, I'm not stressing about it, but that just means you have to feed them a little more because they don't have any they're not getting any food from the clownfish themselves. So I'd recommend feed it maybe twice a week because obviously <clears throat> they can produce actually the amount of three, the waste of three fish. So meaning that they'll, they'll create a lot of, they'll raise your nitrates pretty much, is what I'm trying to say. And so what you wanna do is feed them twice a week and I recommend feeding them a good variety of stuff. So I feed them right here, refroids. I feed them this. I feed them mysis, I feed them brine, brine, and I feed them, go to like a, like an Asian supermarket and then pick up some frozen shrimp, cut it up to about a, like a penny size piece and just drop it on a tentacle and then they'll eat it. I'll probably put some videos up at the end of this video of him eating whatever he is. So actually, yeah, I feed him twice a week. And next, after feeding, I wanna go to just the parameters of water. So like all the corals, you want to keep the salinity salinity 1.02 1.024 1 to 1.026. And mine is about 0 0.25, 0 0.025, whatever. And temperature wise, I keep it at 78 degrees to 79. And that's what this <coughs> excuse me, um, fan keeps the temperature right. And I have the heater in the back chamber. And so temperature just make sure it's stable i mean obviously like you've heard from a million videos stability is key so listen to him because it's it's true it's big facts uh, that's why i have an ro system and i have a fan to keep everything right so next or oh and uh, by the way you don't need to dose any fancy stuff because they don't need calcium they don't have a structure and all that all right and next i want to go to about power head so here if you notice i don't have any of those fan like power heads here and the main reason is just because I don't have space for it, but I know a lot of people who have bigger tanks, they have a lot of those. So obviously if you've probably watched other YouTube videos, they really recommend using like a uh, like foam or something to cover the power head just so that there's room, that's just, there's actually things that happen like anemones will go in there and they'll get shredded up and they'll release toxins that will screw up your whole tank. So definitely don't make that mistake. Um, so that's power heads. Placement, to be honest, placement is you have no control over these guys they have a foot so they'll walk around anywhere to take they'll go on the walls they'll go on the rocks so some they don't really like the sand but they will go on the sand um so yeah placement place them somewhere you want them to be you're not it's obviously not guaranteed that they'll stay they may move around the whole tank and then go back there at the end of the day maybe because that was the best spot but definitely don't count on them staying at one place um as long as the place that they'll find is probably the place that has just amount of lighting lighting for them and flow and every single anemone is different so you can't really control that 
All right, so a lot of people, because I have a bubble tip anemone, you would assume they have bubbles. So here, if you notice, there's some bubbling action, but down here, there's pretty much none. And what I've noticed is under white lighting, they're actually gonna expand a lot and have more stringy tentacles. Yet once I change the lighting to blue, those tentacles are gonna completely become bubbles. Like it's, it's crazy, but I don't know how, I don't know the science of it, but that's what I've noticed. And it's actually, it's, it's a true fact because I've proven it. And um, let's see what else I wanna talk about. All right, so, okay. So another thing that's really important is, so I know us reverse, you wanna move a lot of stuff around because you might not like the look of it, but try to keep your hand out of the tank as often as you can. Me, I'm a huge hypocrite because I stick my hand in here so frequently because like something knocks down, something I don't like, I wanna take something out, I wanna put something in. That stuff definitely, definitely pisses off, um, what's it called, the anemone because he'll literally shrivel up and deflate for the next like maybe hour until he warms up again which is sad but yeah just just try to keep your hands out if you can um and then nitrates everything just just keep it stable to be honest and it's not it's not that bad all right so propagation so obviously if you're in this hobby it's, you know it's not cheap so maybe you want to make a little profit from these guys or you just want to get more or you don't want to get more so you want to know how to prevent that so these guys can produce sexually and asexually, or pretty much you can do it in your own hands. So sexually, ignore that, because that's not gonna happen in your own tank. It's just, it's just not gonna happen. It's not. I think it only happened once in captivity in 2005, but that was that was really rare. So splitting wise, they will actually split themselves either when they're stressed. Um, so people, so when they're stressed, they'll actually split. They'll split their into two pieces, which is crazy, but yeah. And some people do it on purpose, like they'll. Um, do a huge water change one day and then do another one in like a few days or they'll decline the temperature and raise it back up on purposely to stress out this coral to get it to split so they can have more than one coral i meant no my god oh, shoot anemone oh my bad this is not a coral this is an animal it's it's, a, it's this whole every other thing my bad please ignore all the times i said coral my bad anyway yeah so they can split themselves or what you can do is people actually get one of those like blades i have a pocket knife but i'm not going to use that because I just want this guy to be happy. He hasn't split yet, so he's chilling. He's cool. And so what they do is they take him out of the water, and then they'll cut right along the mouth in the middle. And this is going to pretty much just cut them, keep in their mouth, keep in their foot, but split them into two separate pieces, put them back in the tank, and within a week, they'll seal up, and they'll be happy once again, which is pretty crazy, but yeah, you can definitely propagate them in that way. So pretty much, I'll tell you this, anemones... They're not that hard to take care of. When they say, oh, put them in an established tank. I know they're trying to be nice, but I mean, if you don't have patience like me, you can ignore that. As long as you have your stuff, like you know what you're doing. Everything is straight up and like, yeah, you just do, you do your research, man, and you're good. And pretty much that, that should do it for anemones. Just this care guide is pretty much basically for bubble tip enemies because that's the only enemy I've actually done serious re research on. Cause that's obviously the one I have but yeah the growth rate is crazy one month man this dude grew pretty much double his size I'll, I'll definitely put some pictures up of what he was when I first got him um, before I go I just want to show you under blue lighting and then me, oh, it might be hard to see but here's what they look like under blue lighting um, oh, it's gonna be really hard to see but they're green red they got a nice white lighting inside and just speaking overall view of my tank for my own purposes when I'm trying to watch this in the later on I have Devil's Hand back there uh, Joker Favia down there basic Kenya trees uh, green star polyps I have a little bit of clove polyps in the back it's getting hard to see that and then <clears throat> my mini euphilia garden here which I got this frog spawn here this kind of brown reddish frog spawn and this little hammer I got and to be honest, if you're trying to ask for prices, oh, my bad, prices. And how many, they're not that expensive, like what you would think. I got this guy for about 30 bucks. Um, fancier types will probably go for, I've heard, I've seen like a thousand, but that, that's just like fancy ones, so ignore that. And then definitely look for like deals. So if you see going like Craigslist or 
I re really recommend this app and I'll put it in the description it's offer up they'll just throw up they're like they're putting down a tank take that anemone off their hands for a cheap cheap price I've seen them go up for like 15 to 20 bucks for a good size so yeah definitely check those out um but yeah I just overview my tank I have pulsing xenia wait let this focus yeah there you go pulsing xenia right here he's happy he's probably tripled in size um this little toadstool I just got recently so number size difference in there a few corals in the back <clears throat> nothing special and then I have the acetony light my fan here and then I got my little hang on the back refugium which pretty much just has covered with chatomorpha cold pods whatever help nitrates out it's not that it's not that bad got my coral life skimmer which actually does a decent job comparing kind of like comparing to all the other stuff that people say it actually does a good job and then we have my auto top off back there and to be honest this, this is just the overview of my tank it's it's, it's pretty straightforward nothing big definitely recommend both two enemies though and i've only uploaded like another video on my reef tank but definitely check it out thank you for your time and peace